Lindsay, each score 40 36. While Judge Barbara Pettis has it 39 37. You know it's AB, always born, always born, a lot of bills, you know what's going on man, you know, uh, shout out to Crown Joe's boxing man, you know, uh, my people, you know, uh, they, they get it in over there, straight up. What's good YouTube, Crown Joe from Crown Joe Boxing, back with a gem. Um, I'm back with an update on um, DeMar Hamlin's condition. His uncle did an interview uh, this evening and gave an update and also uh, clarified a little more information about what DeMar went through on last night when he suffered a horrific injury during the Monday night football game. Um, he revealed that DeMar um, actually clinically died twice and then was successfully resuscitated both times. Once right there on the football field, um, which is why it took so long for him to be transported by ambulance from the, removed from the football field, put in the ambulance and taken to the hospital. And then again, upon arriving at the hospital. Um, as a retired firefighter EMT, I understand that when you have, you know, those dire situations where uh, people expire, for lack of a better way of saying it, uh, on the spot, sometimes it's better to take life-saving measure, uh, measures right there on the, on the spot, if you can, to try to stabilize them enough to be able to transport. And um, I imagine that's what they did. And um, for what, from what he said, they were able to restore his heartbeat there on the scene. Um, but they were breathing for him. Um, they got him to the hospital went into cardiac arrest for a second time. They were able to resuscitate him a second time. And as of last night, he was on, um, he was intubated and had a machine that was doing 100% of his breathing. Um, I was inspired to know that according to his uncle, on today, the machine was turned down and the machine is only assisting his breathing at about 50%, which means he's doing at least some breathing on his own and there is some lung function. Um, it remains to be seen whether or not he suffered any brain damage during the time that he was um, without oxygen. Um, there's no way to tell how long or if in fact he even was without oxygen because that would depend on how effective the CPR was. And you know I mean, like I said, those are things that uh, we will learn, I guess, when uh, the, the, the medical staff or his family, you know, makes a statement once they try to, uh, you know, awaken him or, you know, um, you know, like, like I said, yeah, wake him up from the coma and see how much, you know, he can actually do on his own. Um, but what I'm hearing so far is very encouraging on the medical side. I'm glad to hear that there's at least a glimmer of hope that Mr. Hamlin is doing a lot better. And um, at, this, at this juncture, he's still here with us. Um, as you guys know, I made a video last night and I was extremely upset with Skip Bayless and I continue to be. Um, ironically, Skip Bayless, who's been a serial LeBron James hater his entire career, all of a sudden, after all the heat he's faced about the tweet he posted on DeMar Hamlin, all the, and uh, Shannon Sharp not showing up to work with him this morning, all of a sudden he has an epiphany. And he's now a LeBron James fan. Coincidence? I think not. He's playing politics. He's trying to change the narrative. He's hoping that his sudden love and respect for LeBron and announcing that he's now a fan would, I guess, uh, get LeBron and maybe even his co-host, Shannon Sharp, to co-sign him and... Uh, you know, um, kind of speak up for him in this time that he's being looked at in a very negative light. I would just say to LeBron and to Shannon, this man has done nothing to, to warrant your support. I don't for one second believe he's sorry for what he said. 
I don't believe for one second that his praise of LeBron is genuine. I believe it's a desperate attempt to bring some of the heat off of himself, change the narrative, and get you know people talking about something different. To all those out there that feel like I feel, do not turn the heat down. Keep the heat up on Skip Bayless. Continue to roast him on Twitter. Continue to tweet how you feel about him. Press Fox Sports Network to get Skip Bayless off the air. This man does not deserve this platform. Many media guys, including Stephen A. Smith, have been suspended or silenced for less. This man has skated for years while riding the fine line between racism, jealousy, and pure hate for our elite African American athletes. And I think he's finally met his match. I think he's finally put his foot far enough in his mouth that he's not going to be able to easily uh, remove it. And um, I think we can press the networks to do what they should do, and that's get him off the air. At the end of the day, if we don't watch those programs, they don't exist. If the athletes refuse to talk with him, he doesn't exist. So, um, again, encouraging news for DeMar Hamlin, but that doesn't change the fact that he was disrespected in the most horrible way possible by Skip Bayless while he was going through uh, losing his life literally twice last night. So, like I said, to all those out there that like myself or appalled by the tweet by Skip Bayless and embarrassed by his half-hearted attempt to save face by uh, praising LeBron James and backpedaling on what he said, keep the heat up. Do not accept this guy's half-hearted half uh, apology. Do not let him off the hook that easy. Um, we know anytime we get out of line, we're silenced. And we usually don't get to go this, push the needle this far. I mean, he, he had no remorse for Kyrie Irving when all Kyrie Irving did was retweet a movie. Didn't even say he agreed with it, didn't align himself with it, nothing. And he had no mercy for Kyrie Irving. So I don't think we have, we owe you any mercy now. Boy, boycott Fox Sports Net, boycott Undisputed, boycott anything affiliated with Skip Bayless until Fox lets him go. Until next time, keep your hands up, your chin down, your ass off the floor. Peace.